when you begin to compare where you want to be to somebody else's success, you're going to be getting wrong. That's already the wrong step. Envision where you where you want your success to look. Because what I what my success looks like is not what you want to be. You're listening to Entrepreneur Journeys, where I share insights and strategies based on owning and managing businesses while traveling and living on three continents. I also interview business owners about their journey, what they learned along the way, and how that can help you with your business growth. For more resources to accelerate your entrepreneur journey, head over to gapologist.com, where I share resources, events, community, and more. I'm your host, Joe Matz. Let's get started. Today, I have Lou Everett and Sherry McManus with us from the Lou Everett Group. They're known for their highly effective coaching, teaching, speaking, and the importance of personal growth and how it impacts our influence as leaders. With more than four decades of combined experience in training, coaching, and leadership, they have also received training and mentoring from well-known and successful coaches and teaches, teachers from the likes of Tony Robbins, Zig Ziglar, Brian Tracy, John Maxwell, Jack Canfield, Paul Martinelli, and they are certified leadership coaches and corporate trainers. They have numerous awards in their name from the likes of Biggest Voices in Leadership. They were named the top 40 ch change management gurus to follow in 2022 by Leaders Hum and also named the top 20 coaches in Raleigh, North Carolina in 1921 by Influence Digest. Welcome to the show, Lou and Sherry. What's up, Joe? Thanks for having us, man. It's great to have you here. And, and tell me, where do you hail from today? Well, our uh, office here, we're, we're coming from our office in Fuquay, Verena, North Carolina. Fuquay, Verena, just south and a little bit east of Raleigh. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, southeast. That's about right. Yeah, yeah super. Beautiful area on, on a rainy day, and it's still beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> rainy it is today, yeah. Well, it's great to have you on the show. And, you know, as the, as the show's name um, proposes, it's about entrepreneur journeys. So today you guys are, are owners of your agency, but let's let's roll back the clock a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, not not too many years ago for you guys. <laughs> Was there any indication in middle school or high school or something that you would eventually be working together in your own business? Well, middle school, I didn't know her. So <laughs> that, that the working together was probably not something that was on my <laughs> mind for sure. But. But I will say that growing up, my it's kind of runs in the family entrepreneurship. So it's one of the one of those things that I'm a firm believer that uh, the independence and the work and the ethic that goes into working for yourself and being a successful entrepreneur really is something that is taught. It's something that you learn. And so that is something that, that at a young age, my father was an entrepreneur. My uncle was an entrepreneur. It's one of those things that just kind of trickled into the to the family. So when, when I was, as far as I can remember, I always tried doing things on my own uh, to, at that time, at that age, it's making money. You know? <laughs> Whether it's selling bubble gum or bootlegging <laughs> tapes. All right, this is not going to be on the legal channels, right? But I'm just saying that those kinds of things is what I did, you know, as initially to kind of like the uh, thought that that was more of the entrepreneurial spirit. So something I always was uh, was a fan of doing was being a boss for myself. So that's I, me. I you know, I understand completely. I am a fourth generation business owner. Yeah, and I had uncles and, and aunts who had their own businesses also. So it was it was just something that's what you do kind kind of path. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And and mine's completely opposite. So Okay. <laughs> I think I'm like the only one in my family that has <laughs> being an entrepreneur. Uh I early on when I was young, my neighbor and I made um book uh like bookmarks like from paper and we colored them and put little tassels on them and then sold them for 25 cents. Now, mind you, we lived on a cul-de-sac. So it wasn't too many people, <laughs> uh, but it was still that kind of fun and like, oh, we can make money. And even if it was 25 cents and then some neighbors came out, felt bad because we were outside all day and <laughs> sitting there <laughs> hoping for people to come and had pity and gave us 50 cents. So. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. Owners do that today. They sit and wait for people to come. That's a that's a common habit today. By the way, <laughs> a cul-de-sac. You know, we learn real quickly. Location, location, location. It's all changed with the internet. That's but, right. So, Sherry, this is interesting because I wonder when you were starting your own business and talking to your family about it. Did you did you feel some resistance there because they were not business owners? Oh yeah. Yeah, this is not our first business. Back in 2005, we had our very first business. Um, So that, yeah, there was some resistance uh, on that. But then time went by for that. We let go of that one, went back into corporate, did some jobs, (laughs) Um, but then came back to this current job. And we've been doing it since 2017. And we had a little bit of resistance, I guess. Not much the second round. First round for sure. For sure. I guess a plan of action we learned. Um, versus the first time we just kind of jumped right in. Um, we listened so, to other people and yeah. they were wrong and, and we figured that we had to learn and do certain things and habits, which I'm sure we'll get into things that we learned that we had to change in order to become effective and in, in order to become successful entrepreneurs. And that's really what drove us to be, to do what we do today is helping other business owners and companies lead successfully in what it is that they decide to do. Yeah, you know, failure is part of the journey, and Mm -hmm. and you guys learned that. Can we talk more about your experience in 2005 and what you learned during that section of your journey? (laughs) Yeah, well, there's a lot. (laughs) But for the the, uh, sake of time, I think that there's a couple of really big, for me, a couple of really big focus nuggets that we can talk about, talk through a little bit. Um, that we've learned from on, on a good side of it. We learned that we work very well together. We jumped in, mind you, we had just, we just moved in together. We had just became uh, kind of an official couple and started this business and at the same very, very close proximity of time. So it was, it was a make or break either. This was going to work business and relationship wise, or it's not. And so it was one of those things that uh, I, and I challenged, anyone out there if you're if you're dating someone and not sure if you're going to be able to live with them try that and it'll, if you can be successful in business ownership and living together at the same time you'll last forever i promise you um, but one of the things that we learned real quick is that we we, we work well together our business our work ethic we had to figure out our niches but our our work ethic and our focuses and our drives were, were very compatible so when we figure that part out as not as business owners specifically then, then things began to build and build very quickly. Um, that's a positive, and we became very successful in our in our building of our business. We we learned a lot, um, failed a lot in that process, but we built very quickly, and we're very successful to the point where we're able to actually give this and sell this business off to other people um, because we built a business of. You always correct me on this number, but I'm thinking we had 25 individuals in our company. Um, that um, that were successful, um, and we we were able to then hand that off. Um, so that is one thing. The, the, the negative side of of business ownership that we learned from that round was we can write a book on it, which maybe we will one day. But but initially, uh, some of the biggest things we realized is that the type of business we got into at that time it was more of a franchise ownership. Not that those are bad, but the type of franchise ownership that we were in. Uh, was not truly fully an entrepreneur, fully owned situation. Hmm. And so we realized as we went through it that what we really wanted, what we really desired was a full ownership concept, everything on our own. That's something that we can call ours. So we realized that that was a big piece of what we took away from that was we want to have full ownership, full creative uh, uh, flexibility on what it is that we just, dis- what we own and what we decided. Right. Makes makes sense. Yeah. So when you started again in 2017, you brought all of those lessons with you. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and also a biggest thing, too, is that because that particular business, we like we did it really fast and it was we knew how to make money and we had that downline. But there were some things that it was it was not sustainable. I mean, we were, you know, making money hand over fist in a short amount of time but we, we lost a lot as well. And the reason being is because one, we didn't have enough relationships with that, knowing what we know now. 
and build upon that for a more lasting, um, having the end in mind versus just quick, the quick quickness of it mm -hmm. and having it more of a business of a uh, slow brew than just having that quick, quick point yeah. and, and crash and burn situation. Good so point. we knew from the second go around, we're like, okay, we're not going to be so quick to just jump in. Let's see if we can build something on the side while we still maintain um, our, our jobs that we didn't hate. We just, you know, it, it would be better off on our side hustle, the I passion guess. And the passion, yeah. Yeah, the passion hmm. was just different. Um, but if it's, it's a lot of work, but that's the smarter way of doing it. Yep. <laughs> sure. I mean, we're, we're talking about longevity and sustainability. Legacy, right? right. I mean, right. that's what it is. And you can make a lot of money. We don't have problems making and, and, and so if you're in, if you're, if you want to become an entrepreneur for the sole purpose of making fast money, you're not going to be successful as an entrepreneur. That's just realistic. But if you want to get into the business of being highly successful with long-term residual income that it, that can make a lot of money over time for your retirement, your dreams, whatever that might be, then, then you're, you're willing to put in the work, then you're going to be successful. It, it, so those, that's really kind of bottom line what we learned. Yeah, sure. I mean, it takes a while to build something sustainable. It it That's takes right. it takes a lot of learning. It takes it takes a while to build something. I mean, yeah. you can build a stick house real quickly, right? right? But build one out of brick. Build one that's going to last, like some of those houses in Italy and in Europe that are you know hundreds and hundreds of years old. That's right. That's right. Takes more time. There. Takes more time. 100%. Valuable lesson. Very valuable lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, so now working together, are you working out of your home? Or are you working out of an office today? Well, we, we grew out of the home, mm -hmm. so that's good. Okay. Yeah, so we have, we have an office uh, that we work out of, but we can't say we don't work at home because, you know, we're as an entrepreneurs and owning our own business and um, being life partners, kind of take work with you and understanding that balance is important. But we we have uh, our business has grown to where we have our office, so we can bring yeah, in, okay, like that to kind of build relationships. Right, right, yeah. Um, there was something I wanted to pick up on that you said when when you were building your organization and, and working part time as a couple, and it can be challenging. Obviously, you guys figured it out in early in the century. And you're yeah. going going at it again about, you know, what, 20 percent through the century and um, very interesting. What are some of the challenges that that you've had to face in, in growing your business in those early days when, you know, you mentioned something very important of keeping your job right and building the business as a side hustle so that you have that stability. But then, you know, typically after 5 p.m., then you're working on your business and you've got your home life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's several challenges there. And I think you hit it though. Um, and here's, and just for a clarification that we were working with companies, we were, we were doing what we love to do for them full time and also building our business full time. This, our business was never a part time job. <laughs> so one of the things that, and that's us not saying that that's, right or wrong that's just us we, we we knew where we wanted to be and we just worked full-time jobs in order to build what we had to build and there was there's a structure behind how it did and i think we've got kind of that magic bullet of what that looks like but um the challenges though that we faced there was we didn't do anything else but that we were we were building our passion and we were we were feeding our passion with with uh working in roles that were allowing us to use our skill sets and getting paid for that in the W2 format to be able to feed that, that passion and build that business. Um, but we certainly were working a lot. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. We, we were grinding. There was, there was no doubt about it uh, for a long yeah. time uh, to really build the business that we have today. Yeah. And it, so, it really does take a lot of effort um, in the beginning to get things rolling and get things moving. And you need that sense of persistence and that sense of, of stick to itness and goals because the income doesn't come in right away. Right. Wow. And you start from working from home. It's, it reminds me of how they shoot rockets 
to the moon or, or to Mars or something, 90% of the energy needed is to get out of the Earth's atmosphere. Yeah. It takes right. all of that to get into space. And once you're in space, there's no resistance. There's no, right? It's, it's a lot easier. But in the beginning, you've got to get off the landing pad and the rocket shakes and it goes up and then where's yeah. the, you know. And, Different layers. And, yeah. Yeah. Right. And, that, and some of that fuel that you needed at the beginning, and we could think about this as tools or, or some of the things you did, they, it drops off the rocket. So you might hire people, you might get some VAs, you right. might figure out how to how to use AI to simplify and, and speed up some of your tasks. Yeah. And you break yeah. through. That's right. And not that it's smooth that. sailing with no effort. We know that. <laughs> That's right. And that's a great analogy because, I mean, as you go through and build in your business, you start to shed the weight yeah. of the things that you don't need any longer as you're building. And that's the big, that's such a challenge, I believe, that a lot of, a lot of successful entrepreneurs face um, as they're building. Now we're not just two of us. Like we we love doing these things, but now we we have we have a company and there's people that that do um, that that go and do more than we could just do on our own. So we have a team of people, and and those team of people are able to accomplish the goals that the dreams that we want to accomplish. But we would never have been able to do that if we had held on to the things that we were doing to get us, as you mentioned, into that next layer, into the next level of space, into the next level of business. If we held on to that and didn't shed those extra layers, the rocket ship certainly would have just kept going. And then eventually, well, we know the result of what happens there. <laughs> so um, you have to shed that. And, yeah. and we learned those lessons very early on. Fortunately, we had amazing mentors and coaches to help us in that direction right. to see that before we could. Right. And I want to add two points to, to this. So one is that the, the commonality, especially if you're in the beginning stages and you're, you're getting a little bit of flight, so to speak, is that don't give up. There's going to be a point, And then I think that would be that next level. I, I guess if you want to look at that to be like, wow, I don't have enough money. I'm really struggling. Um, what do I do? Do I keep going? Because I know I'm confident and I know my passion is, is really helping others in this and to solve this problem yeah. or do you turn around and be like well maybe it's not for me so there's you, you always come in a fork in the road uh, to find out do you keep going and push past those pain points right. or do you or do you keep going go no i'm confident i'm just going to keep keep going through right. all right so that's point number one a lot of people they, they i always get that visual of that little guy uh like in the in the cave with the diamonds on one side and the dirt and then and he can't see it and he's digging and digging and then he gave up but then if he went a little bit more there's diamonds right there was right Right there there. almost there yeah Yeah. so i always vision that a visual person so that was my first point and then the second point a lot of common that the which i know you'll get to but the biggest thing is to know that your business is not your baby so <laughs> that's the biggest thing. Like build it like a machine. We're talking about you know, these spacecraft. Look at it as you're building that's a machine right. together yeah. and don't look at it as your baby. That's right. Get emotionally attached to something. It's tough. And it's yeah. hard not to when you spend your, your, your blood, sweat and tears in something like a business. But realistically, you're going to have to swap parts out and, and you're going to have to move things around. You got to change your thinking. You're going to have to change your and pivot your direction. We've had to do that. There's been, I'm down, and, and what she says there about just holding on, we can sit here and tell you stories of, you know, there has been moments in our beginning stages of our business where we're like, I don't know how we're going to eat. Hmm. I don't know how we're going to pay for this, but there's something about the drive and the passion to do what it is that you desire to do that you need to push past those moments and get the right people involved. Right to help you see through the different directions that you need to see through in order to get to the next step. And when we able, and on a side note, we didn't build this business on credit. We have not used an ounce of credit in this business. Not, not to say that it's wrong. I'm not saying that taking out loans and credit's bad. I'm not saying that at all. I think that it has its place, uh, which we did not, which we did do in the first business. This is when we did not do this. So we have built this business on on money that we've earned yeah. and, and cash. Right. And so that that's, and people, 
and people. Well, it's not just us. We have people that have helped us build this business. But realistically, um, so we can talk about it at some point, but realistically, um, blood, sweat, and tears, we can sit here and get emotional about this business. We can get attached to this business, but Sherry will tell you that there's times when that happens, and I'll sit there and tell it, let's change it. What? I mean change it. We've been wanting to do this for, we've been doing this for so long. Let's change it. Yeah. If you don't, the machine will work the same way it's been working. It'll putt, putt along. You're going to put the same dirty gas in it, and it's not going to change, and you're going to wonder why. You know? So sometimes there's a change and pivot needed, and you just have to Sometimes you, you have to change. You know, but I changed the right. title of my podcast recently. That's right. It yeah. no longer fit what I was doing. And it was, right. I think that the title itself was holding me back. People thought I was talking about espresso coffee on, on the that's podcast. Right. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, and that's true. Yeah. That's right. Cause we were on, it was called, yeah. yeah, it was called espresso jam. Yes. That's right. I that's, remember that. That's yeah. Right. We talked about yeah, everything except coffee. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you, you changed your, your business name too, Joe, too. Yes, that's true. Because they, yeah. because I held on to them like they were my baby. I, I, yeah, I see, fell into yeah. that trap. It, it was a name that meant something to me. That's right. I had some history to that name, too, with other businesses in other countries. So I, I held on to it. Um, but, you know, at a certain point, I realized it just needed to change and needed to be rebranded. Would you like to get in front of more of your ideal clients and at the same time build your brand and create evergreen content? Well, you can do that with podcast guesting. This very moment, you're listening to a podcast that may have been published today or three weeks ago or three years ago. In a very real sense, you're engaging with the speakers, hopefully enjoying yourself and learning something new at the same time. And you're getting to know the guests and how they help their clients, their customers, and the problems that they solve. You may even be their ideal client and want to learn more about them and download one of their free resources you can find in the show notes or maybe even become a client of theirs. See, when you're a guest on a podcast, you will enjoy that same kind of engagement. It is perhaps the easiest, most cost-effective way to get in front of new audiences. Learn how you can be a guest on the right podcast and engage with your ideal clients with the free resources available at gapologist.com. That's right. Next, next time for that next layer, right? Yeah. Um, and we're just, uh, as a little hint, we're, we're doing the same thing soon. Our name is going to, we're going to be doing some major adjustments and uh, in a good way, because that's where we're going. So, oh, good. good. Hey, I look forward to that. Look forward to hearing yeah. about that. You know, for sure. you, you reminded me of, a, of something that happened when I was in Brazil and I, my wife and I were, were running a business and we had rented a hotel we were bringing 700 people to the hotel. They already had tickets. And I brought in a speaker from the United States and I had a training program with cassette tapes and a booklet. And there were six tapes and a booklet. And we everything was ready. And a week before we were heading out to this hotel, we ran into problems. Mm. And we had worked on this and, and focused. And, and we got together and I said, look, I, I, I think we need a plan B. I, I, I'm not, sh I, I, I just, I can't have confidence that we're going to have this stuff together. Right. Well, the team said, you know what? We put the time in, we can do it. I said, if we do it, we're going to, it's going to be a rough week <laughs> of, of, of work. And they said, no, we can do it. And, and we actually did it. We ended up bringing all the raw material up to the hotel because the company couldn't put it together. But they had the six tapes and the booklet and the, and the little plastic folding thing to hold everything. We got there and we were putting those things together the night before everyone arrived until like two in the morning. Wow. Wow. That's a great story. Yeah. That's what you do. <laughs> but that's it. That, that's the definition of passion for what you do and the work to put in as an entrepreneur. That is, that's the definition, right? There. That, that's what it took that week to break through the Earth's atmosphere. If we go back to our yeah. analogy. And um, once everyone had those booklets and they participated in that weekend, man, it, it started rolling. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Isn't it something? That's yeah. great. Great story. Yeah, that. and that's, that's what it takes. But you know what happens, and I've seen this throughout the years, and I'm sure you have too. People see the level of success that you have. You've got an office. You've got... 
you know, you're taking vacations, you've got an office, you've got people working for you. Life looks really good. I'm just starting out and I want what you have tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I've been there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it's easier to see. I always go back to the vision of the iceberg, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody looks at the gorgeous iceberg and then they realize that it's actually much deeper. Yeah. Right. So that, that's yeah. a, to, to build anything. Um, another analogy to, again, I'm a visual person, is the little duck on the water, right? It's like coasted along, looks so pretty. But meanwhile, underneath, <laughs> its little legs going. are going, 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 right? You know, you're hustling underneath, you know? So don't get um, don't get discouraged. Listen to, listen to folks that are ahead of you and take the pitfalls that they went through and the right. lessons that learned. And then you could take it upon yourself to like, oh, okay. I know what not to do, right? right. Or let's yeah. or, or practice good habits, right? I mean, there's tons of information out there of what successful people do on a daily basis. And it's so simple. We hear it all the time, but do we do it, right? And then let's just add one. There's five yeah. other things they could be doing, but it's but like, oh, one. Yeah, yeah, just, just add one, right? right? As simple as like, yeah. make your bed. How many times have we heard that from very famous people and yeah. that are in, you know, in the world's term successful, what do you do every day? I actually get up and make my bed. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's simple. That's a, it's a good point. And, and Dan, to go right to what you're saying, Joe, it's, that's a good point that, and we've all done it, you know, uh, we look at successful people like, and, you know, uh, but for anyone out for anyone that's listening, that just looks at it that way, I want, I want to, I want cost, I'm going to give you a caution and also going to give you some, some positive pieces of this. The caution is, when you begin to compare where you want to be to somebody else's success, you've already been getting wrong. That's already the wrong step. Envision where you where you want your success to look. Because what I what my success looks like is not where you want to be. Right. Not everybody wants to be sitting here at a Fuquay office with this tree behind me. Realistically, <laughs> that might be ugly to some people, but to me, this is great. Right? So everyone is different. Don't get caught up in other people's success and put yourself there. Place yourself in your successful place. Right. What does that look like? And if you have a difficult time envisioning that, that's where people like Sherry and I can help, right? So we can give you the steps necessary to envision where you, where you want to be. And then you can see the steps to get there. That's number one. The second thing to answer your question on that, Joe, is you can do it too. Anybody can be a successful. There are people that are much more successful than and what we do to get to where we are is we and get ourselves involved with those people. We want to be around people that are bigger, better than us, whatever that might look like, whether it's money, whether it's uh, more time, whatever that vision and dream is for you, be around the people that have that. Learn from them, gain experience from them have asked them the right questions and then when that room begins to be filled with people like you and then you begin to look at them and say well i'm beyond that and you're the only one in the room that is bigger it's time to move on to the next room yes and it's okay to separate yourself and divorce yourself from the people in other places that got you where you need to be if they haven't come along with you it's okay not that you can't be friends with them and be okay with it. It's okay. It's it's right. fine. Move into the direction of where your purpose and passion resides. And I'll promise you that you're going to look back and realize how successful you really are because your definition of success might be different than the one that you're looking at and identifying that as success. Right. And it's so important the people you surround yourself with. So yeah, important. And I, I love the way you, you phrase that in a group of people and it, and you find people who are more successful, more intelligent. Yep. I used to play ping pong and I would always look for the person who was better than me. I want to play against you because yep. I'll learn. You learn. You learn. Right. What, when I did uh, Taekwondo, same thing. You know, you want, if I always, if I was a, a blue belt and I always fought against white belts, I wouldn't learn anything. Right. I'm right. a blue belt. I want to fight against some black belts. They'll, kick my you know what but i'll learn right. something but you'll learn that's it you learn right that's exactly right yeah. yeah it's that that's great and you know when you're starting out you've got to build 
what's under the water. You use two water analogies. I love it, the duck and the and the iceberg. Yeah, there's a lot that goes on that people don't see, and right. sometimes you don't want them to see that. Right, right. Yeah, because you're you're there to make a difference. You're there to to inspire people to make a difference in their lives. Yeah. But people want to see that though. They don't want to see perfection. That just really just dis not disappoints, but kind of it frustrates yeah. people. Our habit know? is to see it. Yeah, we like we you, look you we like turn it on the TV, like, YouTube, whatever, we'll see that, right? But realistic, what do we want to hear? We want to hear the real blood and gut stories. We yeah. we want to know, all right, tell me the truth. Like cause right. uh, let's be honest, right? If anyone's been alive for any length of time, we've all been burnt. We've all tried something, haven't been successful at it. Be okay with that. Right. It's okay to tell your burnt stories. I can sit here for you probably another two hours and say all my burnt <laughs> stories. I'm 49 years old and I got lots. But realistically, <laughs> find out what those are. Tell those stories. The, the blood and guts and sweat and tears, whatever that might look like, getting beat up, getting, you know, going a week and eating mac and cheese for two weeks, which we've done to be successful in business. It happens. it happens. We can tell those stories, but realize that the work has to go into that before you can dig your way through and get you where you need to be. Bring the right people in, dig, work, repeat, think, change your thinking on where you want to be, and then just do the work to get there. Yep. Be okay with the length of time it's going to take. It's all right. It doesn't have to happen overnight. I would much rather it go long term and me be able to do what I want to do, be long-term. What you do today equates to how it looks in the future. If you do it quick today, your future is going to be quick. Do you want your future to be quick or do you want that to really be enjoyable and long? Then you want to do it enjoyable and long. Do it now the way you want it to be done then. Yeah, that's great. That's that's great. You know, 20 years ago, Lou, when you said, you know, you could you could talk for two hours and write a book on all the all the errors, mistakes and things that happened that were I would have invited you to for beer to talk about, you know, all the problems and all the mistakes because, you know, a couple beers and, and that gets good. But I think right. what would happen if we did that, we might talk for five or 10 minutes of those things. But then we'd be shifting the conversation to potential yep. and possibilities in the future right. and what we're doing and what we're excited about. Yep. in the future because i see you that way i see you and sherry as very positive forward-looking um business owners 100 percent. yeah that's 100 percent. great great point and that's just, we can talk about that into a blue in the face right but what does it do it gives you some i can mentor you but you're right we have those conversations but realistically is what you do today better than what you did yesterday that's what matters yeah yes yeah. yes that's what really matters because Really, that that's the step in the direction. We're not perfect. We're going to make mistakes. I can say bad moments to help you out, but it's about how we think. It all starts there. And, right. and if we can think properly and think the right way and kind of get our thinking straight, um, then success really is not that far away. It's a matter of what we do today that makes a difference. Right. It's it's layering, like you had mentioned that's before. It. Yep. Yep. And Honestly. you know the important thing, and and I think this is this is understood, right? And and I understand this from almost everything you're saying. And if not, because it just didn't touch on it, um, start where you are. Start with what you have, where you are, and just start. You're, you're not yep. going to look like Lou and Sherry. You're, you're not going to look like me. You're not going to look like other people who've been doing this for you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 years. You're going to look like you. And right. that makes all the difference. Uh -huh. That's right. 100%. Yeah. 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 That's that's the way to go. So we have arrived at the point of the lightning round. I've got some questions for you, and I'm going to ask you to, you know, answer those questions. Cool. You ready? Let's do it. Let's go. How has your entrepreneurial journey transformed you? Hmm. Well, it's given me a lot more patience. Um, with not just people, but myself and my journey to be successful and also have eye-opening experiences on other people's journey and experiences through my success. Reliance upon other people has really made a difference in my life. Hmm. Okay. What most surprised you as a business owner? Oh, well, I'll take that one. So the most what surprised me as a business owner is once I got the mind shift of I'm a business owner, 
running this business, right? Uh, I think that's the thing. And we're, we're business, we started out as business coaches. We still are, but now we're leadership trainers. So we're leadership trainers. And then it was like running a business, but it's like, no, you're a business owner mm. leading a training business. So once you switch that, it, it just really opened up a lot more doors and a lot more things. It's, it's very important. And that's a mindset thing. That's, mm -hmm. you know, when, when I started my language school, I took eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper and I basically wrote on them, if you want to learn English, call Joe. But I never thought of myself as a language teacher. I thought of myself as a language school owner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Big difference. Yeah. Big difference. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't long after that I had seven teachers working for me. Nice. That's, Big difference. That was the plan, right? Yeah. Okay. What unexpected challenge have you had to overcome? I think the unexpected challenge I would, if I put my finger on it, it would it would mainly be um, in the initial stages of our business is is overcoming the um, hurdles of separating from similar mindset of this is a machine. Hmm. This is, this is, I've built it, we've built it, but this is a machine. It can change, it can pivot, it can move. And what direction we put it in, it's completely under our control. Once we allow that machine to run itself, then we have problems. And so we want, we want to kind of manage that, lead that, but allow it to pivot, allow it to change, but guide it and direct it in the, in the direction of our success. So what I've learned unexpected challenge was Sometimes you have to pivot and me being stubborn in the past, I didn't want to pivot. And when I real, once I made that, let's just do it. It changes everything. Yeah. I love that. And what book has made a big impact on you and who would you recommend it to? We can probably both answer that. One. Yeah. My favorite book and it's always my go-to is the 15 invaluable laws of personal growth. And with John Maxwell, that really helped me turn my mindset around. So if you're, in the beginning stage, you know, beginning stages of your journey. But even if you are in, in it for the last couple of years, it doesn't matter because it touches every part of it and it touches a personal development side, but also as a business mindset as well. And it's literally a blueprint of how you can be better. Yeah. So uh, for me, it's as a man thinketh, hmm. James Allen. I think it's important that everything that we do starts with how we think. Yes. And it just, it just does. And uh, no matter how we look at it, even if you're not like, oh, I'm not really philosophical, I'm not into that, you can, don't have to be into it for it to be real. And the reality of it is, is thinking is what drives our success, it drives what we do, it drives our actions, it drives what we say, it drives what we do, um, it drives our behavior, our actions, our facial features. So if you can find out, understand how you think, then how you think, you become. So that book there, I recommend to anybody that wants to uh, make a change in their life, period. If you want to become better, that's a book to read. If you don't want to become better, don't read it. Yeah, it's a great book. It's a very short book. Very short. But it's very condensed. It's like espresso coffee. It's it's yeah. short and condensed. Packed Pack full, yeah. You, you'll read, you'll say, oh, I can read that in one night. I want to try it. Try it. Yeah. yeah. Try it. it. It should be read slowly with lots of yes. thought in between the paragraphs. Digestion. Yes. Digestion. Yes, absolutely. What advice would you give to aspiring entrepreneurs? My biggest one is just don't give up. If this is truly your passion to make sure that you're aligned with your, your passion and your purpose, then go for it. Like don't give up for it. And mine's don't do it alone. Okay. Yeah. Don't do it alone. It, do, it doesn't make sense. <clears throat> um, we, Sherry and I don't believe in competition. Hmm. I, I don't there are people out there that are leadership coaches. They're co corporate trainers. They do all the things that we do. Um, we even have an IT leg that does up leveling and IT training. We can talk about that another time, but that's another pivot we made because of, because of some experiences in our past. And realistically, there's other companies that do it. And that's cool. Matter of fact, we will research out those and that, let's talk, let's have coffee. Let, how can we help you? Because realistic competition exists in our thoughts. If we partner, now, all of a sudden, there's a whole different perspective. So uh, you need people. You're not going to do it alone. You need people. Someone who says that they're a self-made millionaire, they're a liar. doesn't exist. Don't be around those people. 
So <laughs> maybe millionaires don't exist. Be around them for a, a day and you'll find out that they didn't do this by themselves. Yeah. So understand you need people. There's a lot of cooperation and collaboration and it, it takes a village. Yeah, you know, 100%. Yeah, because we, we can't have everything. I, some of the biggest mistakes I've made in, in my life and my business was when I only consulted the space between my ears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. We all make the same one. <laughs> we learn. We learn. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yes. If if you're young or, or young at any age and you're listening to this, <laughs> yeah. don't, don't make those mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, guys, it, it has been super having you here on the show today. And I, I appreciate you so much. Uh, you, well, thank you for having us, Joe, again. And we, we do appreciate what you do. Um, appreciate your transparency and just your your straightforwardness um, uh, and your support. So thank you for having us. Yeah, great. And if people want to know more about you, how, how can they get more Lou and Sherry? <laughs> sure. Uh, we're actually on LinkedIn as well as Facebook. And you can also reach us on our website, loueverettgroup.com. And you feel free to reach out to us by phone or our uh, Calendly link is on there as well. And let's have a conversation. We love making partnerships. We love having conversations and really building relationships. Okay. Even though we're a team of people, um, we're very reachable. Uh, so to do that. And if you do like, ah, I didn't write all that down, Joe will take care of that. But on top of it, just go to Google and type us in. And we'll, we're at, we're, we'll come up. So yep. feel free to reach out. Absolutely. And all, all that information will be in the show notes. Awesome. And absolutely, if you don't like show notes, where do you have to go? You have to go to Lou, loueverettgroup.com. That's it. Perfect. It. Very good. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a great day and a great week. You bet. Thanks, Joe. Okay, thanks, Joe. Bye now. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Entrepreneur Journeys. Remember to subscribe so you catch all the episodes and check out the show notes for any free giveaways or gifts that were mentioned during this show. Entrepreneur Journeys is brought to you by Apexable, providing the insights, tools, and transformative structures to help you reach your business summit. I'm your show host, Joe Matz, and until next time, I hope your journey is filled with breathtaking views and successful outcomes.